Thank you, Sam and Lynn and all. And what on earth is the point of music? What is the point of it? Now, I understand that if you are Justin Bieber, you get to date Selena Gomez. That's not bad. Good Canadian boy. If you're Al Jolson, you get to sing Mammy songs. That has some merit in certain circles. But what is the purpose or the function or the rationale or the place or perhaps most importantly, the obligation of music? It is, I think, arguably the case that there are any number of human cultures that never developed currency, that never became literate in the written sense. They never invented the wheel. They never knew agriculture. But it is assuredly the case that there is no known human culture anywhere here on planet ocean <laughs> that does not have music. Every culture that has ever been examined, studied, every culture that has ever been inherited and traduced has music. This is surely of some significance to us as a species. And for those of us who can't do anything else, we wake up in the morning, and we hear music, we spend the day making music, we go to bed once again hearing music, worst of all singing music. We make ourselves effectively, let's tell the truth about it, unemployable. <laughs> but it is nonetheless a wonderful and necessary art, and as Sam kindly mentioned, I have the privilege of working for City Opera Vancouver, which is a professional chamber opera company, and we think about these things a good deal, as did once not so long ago, a conductor by the name of Sergio Celebidaca, who was asked by a hapless student in one of his classes, Maestro, Please tell us, what is the purpose of music? Is it beauty? And Celebedeca thundered and said, no, the purpose of music is not beauty. The purpose of music is truth. Beauty is the bait. So it is for us who make opera. And at City Opera, we've chosen chamber opera, the small forms, the intimate eloquence, the close-up, as our means of speaking through beauty to truth. We have commissioned three works, one of which you will hear a bit of this evening. We've commissioned an opera called Pauline. It's set in Vancouver in March of 1913, in the last week in the life of Pauline Johnson who lived and died at Butte and Alberni in the West End. Margaret Atwood has written the libretto. It is stunning, her first opera. Judith Forst will sing the lead role. We've also taken on another project and will present the world premiere in the chamber version of an opera whose title you know well, but perhaps have not yet thought of as an opera, Brokeback Mountain. A story of two people who are afraid of love and the consequences and the obligations of love a story probably most of us know all too well. Love is frightening as it is necessary. And then two years ago, through Sam and Lynn, we met Charles Annenberg Weingarten, who came to us with a proposal and said, I would like you to do an opera about the war in Iraq, about PTSD, and about the consequences that everyone faces, civilian and military, when you are obligated to comprehend the agony and the pain you have caused and suffered in equal measure. And we have invented a story called Fallujah, just Sunday night. In workshop still, we gave its premiere. And in the name of what we do in opera, I'd like the opportunity to present to you David Boothroyd, the staff pianist at City Opera Vancouver, and Christopher Mayel, who created the role of Taylor. And in an aria called One, considers when looking at a photograph on the battlefield, the eve of the Battle of Fallujah itself in 2004, what it means to see this life, this young life, his life, the life he has created, there in such a dreadful place, under such appalling circumstances, and yet smiling through that photograph comes the very name and face of love itself. Would you welcome please David and Christopher and a new aria called One.
Your dinner, your beer, your booze. 